Premier, what do you say today to Victorians who, after 111 days of uh, lockdown last year, might be asking, how is it the case that their government still lacks such confidence in your hotel quarantine systems and your contact tracing, that you apparently can't manage two to three cases of COVID a day in a population of about 6.3 million people? Well, you've made a number of assertions there. And well, they're all facts, actually. Well, no, they're not. You've just put it to me that there's a lack of confidence. Absolutely, I'm more than confident in the team we have and in the Victorian community well, that, you, that you they can get through this. So with the greatest of respect, you have put a number of things to me that are not accurate. But the data premier that we were just provided with showed that they were contacts of contacts. They were really well identified. And well, not, not all of them, actually. Uh, were, some of them have come into scope. They've been well identified and pinned down. Your hospitals aren't in any danger of being overwhelmed. It's a small number of cases. That all suggests that your system is actually working pretty well to contain it. So why the need for lockdown? Well, well, that's a very different question to the one that you asked at the beginning, where you contended that there were all sorts of confidence issues. Well, I'm going based on that you said on the weekend that a lockdown was needed because contact tracers could not keep up with the spread of the UK variant, which would imply that you lack confidence. No, that's doesn't, not what it implies at all. That's not what it implies at all. What it implies and what it actually states is that this thing's moving really fast. That shouldn't be taken as a criticism of thousands of people who are working night and day uh, and are pulling this up. Uh, I suppose I'll put it to you this way, Lee, if you're putting it to me that I ought to ignore the advice that's provided to me by the Chief Health Officer, well, I will not do that. So are you going to put the state into a five-day lockdown every time you have two or three new cases a day? We'll look at every positive case on its uh, merits, um, but we would always work as hard as we possibly can to avoid having any statewide measures, any, uh, any uh, extra rules. Uh, but look, you know, this, but that's this pretty is hard news for Victorians to take that two to three cases a day, the system may not be able to handle it. And that that's on the table that you might have a five day lockdown every time well, you have two or again, three cases. I think, I think it's important to I think it's important to acknowledge that when you use terms like the system may not be able to handle it. Uh, this is not the 2020 virus. This is a very different virus. And if you want to look at systems that can't handle things, well, have a look at Europe. Have a look at so many parts of the world. They're dealing with what happens when this UK strain runs wild. There's just no pulling it, pulling it up. And particularly when you get so close, and we've seen some very encouraging announcements overnight from the Commonwealth Government in relation to uh, the uh, vaccine rollout, and we look forward to playing our part in that. However we can help, we're there to do the very best we possibly can. When you're so close to having uh, frontline workers and particularly, particularly vulnerable Victorians uh, getting that jab, uh, we've, we've, got to, we've got to hold these settings, we've got to protect what we've built, and that's exactly what we've done. If snap lockdowns are going to continue to be a tool or an, an option for a small number of cases, how can Victorian businesses make any regular planning, let alone investment planning? Well, again, I'm not accepting, and I think it's just wrong to say that they're, they're a tool for a small number of cases as, as such. You use the term a, small number of cases yeah, yeah, before yourself. But they're a tool, yeah, and also I think about 14 times made the point, Lee, that every case on its merits. So I think we we'll sort of get, anyway, uh, I'm putting it to you that we will always reserve the right to look at individual cases and to follow the advice that is given to us. Uh, and I just don't think you want, you, you wouldn't want it any other way. Because the notion, you know, let's just go back to first principles here. Uh, if, I, if, if I'm, you know, would you really want me to be shopping around for the best advice? the most politically uh, popular advice? No, what Would I'm you really want me to say, oh, well, gee, that'll be, that'll be incredibly hard. And I'm not doubting that for a moment, how hard it is. I'm not prepared to do that. Not at all, Premier. I'm just, what, I, what I'm trying to get to is, it obviously, as you would agree, lockdowns impose a real cost on the community. Victorians have already paid a really high price because of the long lockdown last yes. year. Your own team just made it clear that the cases are actually very well traced, managed and contained. Yes. So why have you needed to resort to the harsh measure of a lockdown? The types of cases, this UK strain, the fact that uh, despite uh, the, the amazing efforts of all of our contact tracers and testers and path lab workers and the, the, the work of so many uh, genuine hardworking Victorians, we were getting us, we, were, we had a situation where at the same time as we're becoming aware of the primary case, they've already infected their close contacts. That's not something we've seen before. That, that, the speed at which this has moved uh, saw our public health team uh, make the very difficult decisions 
based on the best of science and the best understanding you can possibly have of any outbreak, that this was a difficult but a proportionate and necessary thing to do. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.